Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about the signals and I am going to give some introduction to the signals and then I will talk about the classification of signals. So this is my uh, lecture 4 in the lecture series on signals and systems. So in this I am going to discuss the signal, its energy and its power and finally we will classify the signals based on certain signal attributes and I am going to refer these this sources which I am showing on the slide for the content. So let us say, let us define the signal. A signal is the electrical equivalent of any physical quantity. If you take a physical quantity, for example, temperature, you want to measure the temperature at some point in this room. So you have to put a thermometer and you have to note down the readings. If it is automatically, if you want to note down the readings automatically, you have to put an electronic device called thermocouple and convert the temperature quantity, physical quantity into electrical energy or electrical voltage or current and then uh, display it on the oscilloscope or digitize it and uh, display as a digit. Okay. So basically here the physical parameter is the temperature. Now let us, another parameter can be pressure. For example, if you take, if you want to measure the pressure at certain point uh, in the atmosphere, same thing, you can use the barometer and uh, I mean, you, available things are, digital barometers are available. So, the pressure also you can sense and another para, another physical quantity could be, I mean, similar to pressure only, but it is extension of pressure. And if I take, for example, if I take uh, the speech here, if I take the speech here and in this, I have the human voice basically. For example, I am taking the class now. And, and I, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to speak also. Next, what is the word which, which is coming out of my uh, mouth? I'm not even aware because based on the context, I will be explaining. So the speech, it is something like a uh, random signal. If you take the speech and if you put the microphone and convert this speech into microphone and display on the oscilloscope, then you will see a random waveform. You can see very clearly a random waveform because what I am going to talk, what I am going to uh, put the words in a sentence, uh, even I am not aware. Okay. It is based on the content. I will be spontaneously generating this speech. So, if you convert this speech into electrical signal by using uh, microphone, you will get the electrical signal. So, what is the physical parameter here which, which I am sensing here? That is nothing but compressions and rarefactions. For example, when I am speaking, it will go the the you know, the pressure out of my, uh, pressure waves out of my mouth will hit the uh, molecules in the atmosphere and when the pressure is more, uh, molecules will come closer. It is called, uh, I mean, compression basically and if the pressure is less, then they will move away. So, compressions and rare fractions will happen in the air. That is what is, we are, another form of pressure this is and this is sensed by uh, your human ear or you can put uh, uh, another, I mean, you can you can sense this one. Uh, basically, it is for the uh, listener. So, that is what is what will happen is the listener is going to hear this uh, through the uh, ear, ear drum, and it is converted into uh, electrical, bioelectrical signal. So, here, for example, I want to do some kind of speech processing. So, what I will do, I will record this speech using microphone and record it digitally or in, uh, uh, on the tape, magnetic tape, and that I use for further process. Okay, so usually here the physical parameter is compression and rare fractions in the A. Then EEG, if you take EEG, electroencephalogram. So electroencephalogram captures at different locations of our skull by putting electrodes, the electrical activity which is happening 
at those points. So the electrical activity happening at different points of the skull is captured by the seas. So there the voltage, I mean, uh, it is converted again through the electrodes. Okay, easy electrodes are there. There are 16 channels, 64 channel, 128 channels like that there. And here, what is the sensing uh, physical parameter here? It is the electrical or ions basically. Okay, changing the ion density and basically there it is nothing but current. You can say charge, charge density, uh, which is changing temporarily with the time on the skull at different locations. So that is what is easy. Then coming to ECG, in ECG, in ECG, uh, because heart is pumping the uh, blood into the arteries and what happens is the continuously uh, the charge, the electric charge on the walls of the uh, heart, it, it will be changing continuously, okay, because, because the chambers uh, are receiving the blood from the vessels and again impure blood and again it purifies and uh, I mean it, it, it will send basically it won't purify it sends to the lungs so again it will be clean again it will come back so in the, in the total process what happens is the continuously on the walls of the heart the charge is accumulating uh, again uh, releasing accumulating and uh, reducing like that okay so the charge patterns will change these are this is the charge we are going to sense by using the this is, I mean, this is electrocardiogram, it is called, and the physical parameter is the, the again the electrical charge. So, like this, you can name any number of physical parameters which you can convert into electrical signal. And here, signal means it is an electrical signal only we are considering. And the, what are the electrical quantities here? The quantities are voltage and current. Okay, both you can, if it is a voltage sensor, it will generate voltage, if it is a current sensor, it will generate the uh, current. Okay, now let us see. I am showing here. I am showing here a sine wave. I am showing you here sine wave. And where where you get this sine wave? How you get this sine wave? So this sine wave is a basically found in the simple harmonic motion. For example, if we take a pendulum here, so there is a bob, and you take this side, extreme side. Bob comes here and release this. It comes to it comes to the neutral position. This is the neutral position. So at t equal to zero, I can call it as neutral position. And when you pull to the right, the bob comes here again. If you release, it will come to the uh, left side again. So like that, if you leave like that, the pendulum will be moving to and fro like this. So the, the displacement from the center position that is at t equal to zero. If I find if you take the if I take the displacement x for example, if I take the displacement x from the neutral position, then it is a uh, basically a sine wave. So that is nothing but the uh, simple harmonic motion basically. Okay. So that is the that is the basically origin of the uh, sine wave. And the second wave I have shown here is, so what is the physical parameter in the first wave? Physical parameter is the distance from the neutral position of the uh, pendulum. Okay, neutral position of the bob in the pendulum. That is the uh, displacement basically. You are sensing the displacement converted into the electrical quantity. So the profile will look like this wave form, that is sine wave. Now let us take an automatic iron and what will happen if you, if you take automatic iron, what happens? The temperature will build up. It is power, temperature will, up, will build up, after it reaches a certain temperature, then it will switch off, the power is cut off, then automatically the temperature of the iron box will come down. Again, it, it is automatically connected to the AC supply. So like that, applying the power, cutting, cutting of the power. So like that. At this point, the power is cut off. So slowly, the temperature decreases again. Again, increases, decreases. So in this way, uh, it looks like a triangular waveform. In linearly increasing, again linearly decreasing. So this you can call it as a triangular waveform. So here, what is the parameter again, which we are sensing is nothing but temperature. Now see here in the uh, third plot, 
I am showing uh, a speech signal basically. This is the speech signal of the word type. Okay, type. See, for example, if you take this is the T, it is T, and this is aspiration noise, and this is the other part, I. Okay, this is I. So here, basically, I mean, this is uh, uh, original English pronunciation by the Western people. So this is the time. Basically, it's time. So that's why there is a lot of uh, aspiration noise there. But if, if we, if we, we are asked, if Indians are asked to pronounce it, we generally say that time. So when you say time, this may not be there, for example. Okay. When you say time, this aspiration may not be there much. So this is this is directly. Connected to this. So basically, what is that? Here, I mean, some kind of waveform you are getting, depending on the each phone means the I mean, you know, you know, phone. So phone means the fundamental unit of the sound, depending on the sound and different wave waveforms are generated here. So this is basically one speech signal. It is a random signal for the word time I have shown. Same time. If you spell again, you will get slightly different. You won't get the exactly same. Waveform. If some other person uh, spells also same word will look will like a different thing. So it is a basically and within this also there is a lot of randomness involved. Okay. So these are the three kinds of signals uh, you can uh, we come across in general. Okay. Now let us uh, talk about the signal energy. And in this the signal energy we have the let us take a real signal here. There is a real signal. You are defining the energy. EF is the energy of the signal. Integration minus infinite to integration minus infinite to plus infinite. F square of T dt. So what we are doing here is we are squaring. For example, I have shown here one waveform which is Non-linear, it is not linear actually. Okay, non-linearly increasing, monotonically increasing. When I square this, what happens is it will look something like this. So after squaring, I will get this, and I am finding the area under this curve. If I find the area under this curve, this is nothing but integration. Basically, integration means area under the curve. Okay, so whatever I have shown as the shaded area, it is the uh, after integration, whatever you are getting, this is called as energy of the signal. Okay, it is nothing but the energy of the given signal, f of t. Now, sometimes we come across the complex valued signal. What is complex valued signals? In complex valued signals, I have let us say r plus j x, some real quantity. This is real quantity. This is in a generic quantity. And in this case. I mean, basically, in real world, you always get real signals, but complex signals are defined for mathematical analysis purpose. So it is, uh, when it is defined, so what we have to take, because square of that one must be real quantity again, because energy cannot be imaginary, because we talk about the real energy. So though the signal is complex value, the energy must be real. So to make it real, the best thing is f of t, f of t. Multiply it by multiply it by conjugate of f of t. Okay, so it is a signal conjugate of the signal. So when you multiply this, what will happen? I will get the real quantity that is nothing but r square x. Okay, so this is what is the real quantity. So what is this? This is nothing but absolute square of the absolute value. Okay, so you know you know that this is the absolute value okay so this is the absolute value here modulus absolute value absolute value means square root of r square plus x square when you square it you will get r square plus x square okay so even though the complex valued signal is complex the energy is real okay so that is the arrangement we are making this, that is the provision we are making to define the energy of a signal. So ultimately, if you want to cover both real and complex valued signals, what you will do directly take the modulus of that. That's all. And it, it is it works not only for the complex valued signal; it works for the 
real signals are shown. Okay. Now, let us take a sine wave which I have shown here and let us find, try to find the energy. What is the duration of the sine wave? It extends up to infinite here. It extends. It will extend like this and it will extend on the left side. So, this is minus infinite here and plus infinite here. So, this signal, what is the signal? The signal is of duration infinite, sine wave extends towards infinite, towards right and it extends towards left also. Okay. So, uh, what is the, uh, if I find the energy, for example, let us take the square of this one. So, if I take the square of this one, if I take the square of this one, I will get like this and negative part also I will get like this. This is also like this. So, like that I will get all After squaring the negative part also will become positive. Correct? So, what happens? For every cycle, for every half cycle, you are getting the uh, square. After square, you are getting a lobe there. So, if you take the area under all lobes, the energy, the area under the curve F square, it will become infinite because duration is infinite. Number of how many? Uh, lobes are there, there are, I mean, uh, how many lobes are there in the square wave form? There are inf infinite. So, the area is also infinite. So, if the energy is infinite, in this case, because it is a periodic signal, the energy is infinite. Okay, it is an infinite signal, period, infinite periodic signal. So, the energy will be infinite. So, what you have to do? You cannot work using the energy. For this kind of signals, you have to search for another variable, another attribute, another parameter which you can use to characterize these kind of signals. Okay, so that is nothing but see here power. For example, in this case what I will do, I will take, I will take only the one cycle, one log for example, let us say this is t. Okay, this is t. If I take sine wave, if I take the sine wave cycle, I mean cycle period, it is capital T. Okay, but after squaring, the cycle period becomes T by 2. Correct? It becomes T by 2. So, if I take the whole cycle, both positive and negative cycles, if I, after squaring, for example, we have this, where is this? Let us take this. This is positive cycle and this is negative cycle, both cycles. Okay. So, now what I can do is, let us take this center point as the 0 that is t equal to 0. Okay, this is nothing but this is nothing but t equal to 0. This side, what is this part? This part is plus t by 2. This part is this side it is minus t by 2. Plus t by 2 here, minus t by 2 here. Okay, so if I consider only one cycle, then I want to integrate only for one cycle. Then I will I will take the definition like this, take f square, second definition, f square, integration between minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and the duration is t divided by t. Why divided by t? Because you have taken the, you want to find the average, average energy. You want to find the average energy. Okay. So, after integration, you are dividing this by t. That is the duration of the one cycle. And you have given limit also because you want it to be as large as possible. Instead of instead of single cycle, I can extend this period. I can extend this period instead of taking single cycle, I can extend it to any value. As t tends to infinite, it becomes very large. That means as much as possible signal I can take. So, because it does not matter for us if I take one cycle or 100 cycles or 1000 cycles. Okay. So, because all energies are same, each energy of each cycle is same. So, what I, I will do, as t tends to infinite, then uh, I will call that as the power. Why I call that as the power? Because the equation is the integration, total integration divided by t is there here. So, energy divided by time is nothing but power. So, if you define the power for a periodic signals like this, and it is more convenient, it is a finite value, it is not infinite value. So, whether it is energy or power, there should be 
finite values. They must be finite values to work with, otherwise we cannot work with such signals. So, uh, if I take a, a periodic signals, I can say that I can comfortably take the NH and a periodic signals, time limited signals. Okay. Otherwise, a periodic signal, infinite signal, if I take that uh, area under the curve will be infinite again. So, it won't serve any purpose. So, time limited signal, a periodic signal. In such case, I, I can define comfortably the energy and I can work with energy. And in case of periodic signals and periodic infinite signals, we, I can define the power as the basic parameter to characterize the signal. I can work with power uh, comfortably compared to the energy because energy anyway is infinite there. Okay. Now, so that's why the power into power comes into picture here. Now, based on this, let us, uh, I mean, uh, signal and power most frequently will be using and let us classify the signals now. So, I have shown here five types of classifications and uh, first classification is continuous time and discrete time, continuous time and discrete time. Second one is periodic, uh, periodic. third one is energy power. Okay. Then fourth one is deterministic versus random signals. Deterministic versus other one is causal signals, anti-causal signals and non-causal signals. Okay. There are five types. Let us see one by one. Continuous time signal. So consider an analog signal in the sense here the analog means continuous signal. Means continuous signal. Continuous voltage continuous current like that. It is shown as XA to say that it is XA of T. T is a continuous variable which is shown here uh, on the left side. Okay. Now, let us put a switch here which closes every T seconds, capital T seconds. So, the switch closes uh, every capital T seconds and and stays instantly, very minute duration it will be connected, afterwards immediately it will open again. So like that it continues. So what will happen? So when the switch opens, the signal, the input signal doesn't appear at the output. Okay. When the switch is closed, the output appears, the, sorry, the signal input appears at the outputs through the switch. Okay, the switch is closed or input is connected to the output. If the switch is not closed, the input doesn't appear at the output. So, output is zero. So, that kind of situation. So, in that case, what is that you will get? You will get the right hand at the output you will get this. What is that you are getting here? So, you have captured some voltage which is closed at this point. Here, zero because switch is open. Again, switch is closed here. Again, switch is open. So, wherever the samples are there here, the switch is closed. And between the samples, the switch is open. So, you can call this kind of thing as a discrete time signal. So, what is it called discrete? Why it is called discrete time signal? You are uh, discretizing the parameter T, independent parameter time, you are discretizing. Discretizing means quantizing. So, at certain instants only, at certain regular intervals only, the signal is available. At other places, the signal is zero. You are basically, you are not worried about the signal which is there in between two values. Okay. And how it is represented? It is represented by Xn, Nt. For example, N can be 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. When N equal to 1, I will get when n equal to 0, when n equal to 0, I will get when n equal to 0, I will get this sample, when n equal to 1, I will get this sample, when n equal to 2, I will get this sample. So, at t, at t, this is 0, t, 2t, like that, etc, etc, up to 90, I am showing you. Okay. So, this is what? But, this parameter t, for example, even if I 
exclude this t uh, information i am not losing because i mean because i know it is a constant parameter constant uh, time interval capital t okay it is the same for all samples between between two samples it is same so even if i ignore that nothing will happen now i can say that the discrete signal time at index n equal to 0 and n equal to 2 1 2 3 like that okay so i am i am removing the information of sampling interval okay this process is called sampling and the switch is called sampler so so i am sampling the time continuous uh, signal in time i am getting the discrete time signal and please note that this discrete time signal is not the digital signal you should never call it as a digital signal because digital signal comes if we quantize in the same way on the vertical axis that is nothing but x i, I should be able to quantize the x then only i can call it as a digital signal so never call this as a digital signal you please call it only as the discrete time signal and here <laughs> okay so in this discrete time signal here in this discrete time signal if you take the voltage values or vertical I mean x values on the vertical axis y axis they are continuous for example if i take here let us say 5 volts this corresponds to 5 volts this is 0 this is 5 volts now between 0 and 5 how many levels are there how many levels are possible we all know that between 0 and 5 infinite uh, real numbers can be generated. So, infinite values are possible between 0 and 5. So, uh, if I uh, quantize these infinite values into only certain number of values, then I call it as discretization in the y axis. Discretization on the y axis that is nothing but quantization of the uh, voltage, and then you can uh, convert that into binary codes, then you can call it as a digital signal. Okay. But all this process I am not doing. I am doing only on the process discretization of the time on horizontal axis. So, we have to call this as only discrete time signal. <laughs> now, let us talk about the second classification that is periodic a periodic. A signal f of t, a signal f of t is called periodic signal if f of t equal to f of t plus t naught for all t okay or you can also uh, call like this f of t plus k t naught for k equal to 0 1 2 3 etc etc okay so what is this first of all take this take from here to here t naught so let us say something like this here t this is t this is t plus t naught okay t plus t naught and this quantity is t naught let us take one value here and see the value here which are separated by t naught both are same now take one value here and take another value here both are separated by both are separated by t naught seconds okay so in that way any value you take in the first portion of the waveform corresponding portions here are the same so i can say that this is the actual signal and same signal is repeating after t naught seconds and same signal is repeating after 2 t naught seconds okay so t naught seconds is the original signal first cycle second cycle is repeating after t naught seconds t plus t naught it means t plus t naught after t naught seconds and here this parameter i call it as a t plus 2 t naught okay similarly i can have t plus k t naught k t naught so k equal to 0 1 2 3 like that in general all cycles can be covered by this uh, equation. Okay, so it is a periodic signal. If this condition is not satisfied, that means if f of t is not equal to, I can say that f of t is not equal to f of t plus t naught. 
Then what is this called? You can call this as a periodic signal. This is so it is equality or inequality matters. Okay. If it is not equal, I can call it as a periodic signal, which has no period, which is not repeating after some time. So that is called periodic signal and a periodic signal. Now energy. So as you know, the energy must be finite. That is what I have shown here in the form of equation. So it should be less than infinite. Otherwise, you cannot use the energy parameter. Okay. So a signal with finite energy, whose energy is less than infinite, which is not infinite, is called an energy signal. Okay. Then what is power? Take this energy, divide by time. You will get the power. Okay. That is the power definition. Then since the averaging is over an infinite large interval, a signal with finite energy has a zero power. First thing is, let us take this. Here, what we are doing? Take something, some signal like this, some signal. Let us say it is an infinite signal. It's okay. Make it infinite signal, no problem. Okay? Very large signal, but has finite energy. What it means? Signal may be infinite, but the area under this curve, because it is coming. It is as the time increases, the amplitude is asymptotically approaching the zero value here. At higher values of t, large values of t, as t tends to infinite, let us say that is tending towards the zero. So what happens is, in that case, it has the finite energy. Okay, because it is coming down, so it has the finite energy. So if it is as a finite energy, you can call this as energy signal. And its energy is Ex, correct? Its energy is Ex. So, uh, as far as energy definition is concerned, there is no problem. But what about the power? So, what is the power in this? I should say that Ex divided by T. Where T tends to infinite, very large. Because that is the definition for power. Okay? You know it, please see here. I am going back. See here. the This is the definition, correct? Limit. As limit t tends to infinite. So we should take t as much large as possible. As large as possible. Okay. So that is the thing. Now, if I take here, this is finite, means it is less than infinite. Infinite divided by infinite, it becomes, I can say, zero. Okay. Something divided by infinite, it becomes zero. So for energy signal, you can say that power is zero. Okay. So now what about the uh, other case? If the energy is infinite, power is finite. If the energy is infinite, power is finite. But if the energy is finite, the power is zero. Okay. You see the duality here. They are not exactly same. Okay. That you should remember. Power signal, as I, I have already explained this, so this is an example of power signal. A signal with finite non-zero power. It should not be zero power means no signal at all. Okay. So let us take this for example. If I square this, I will get like this. If I square this, I will get like this. Correct? So if I square this, this is the area under the square curve. And as I am taking for one cycle, it is a periodic thing. And if I take, if it has infinite cycles, if I take as t tends to infinite also, I will get the same thing. So it is not a signal with finite energy, sorry, uh, with, uh, for, uh, with finite power, means finite non-zero power is the power signal. So periodic signals, I can say periodic signals, all periodic signals are power signals. Yeah. Periodic signals are all periodic signals. Sorry. All time limited signals have finite energy. Okay. All time limited signals have finite energy and they have the power zero. Okay. So in this case, I am taking the uh, power signal. When I take the power signal, energy becomes infinite here. Okay. I am just repeating that one, nothing new. So this is what, uh, no. Okay. Now let us talk about the 
deterministic signals and random signals. These are the very, very important classification and because in communications and electronic engineering comes across the signal which is carrier signal in the communications with high power and there will be a low noise signal and sometimes the noise level may be increasing but we design communication systems with high power so that uh, I mean uh, for the given channel always the signal dominates not the noise. Okay, you, you are going to noise and signal analysis before designing a communication link. So here uh, the communication will be established uh, properly at least the, the signal to noise ratio must be 15 dB. If it is less than 15 dB it is very difficult to establish the communications. Okay, so uh, the signal to noise is the more much better and 30 dB is the best and if you go further as, as much as possible. Okay, so that is what the, so I can say that this is the signal, this is the noise. There is a reason I have two types of signals for an electronic engineer and one is deterministic signal. If you see this, why you are calling this as a deterministic signal? If I know the value here, I can find the value here means this signal first cycle is repeating same thing and you can express this as sin omega t. I can express this signal x of t equal to sin omega t. So you have modeled this signal with a simple equation, simple relation. So substitute any value for example I want I want the value at this 0 0.0.08 0 .0. substitute to t equal to 0. 0, 0, 008 seconds. Then what is the value you will get from this? So that is nothing but the voltage or current waveform. Okay, I mean voltage at that instant. Okay, so this is what you have the, I mean it is a deterministic signal because by knowing the previous samples you can exactly determine the uh, present sample or future samples also. That means you are able to model the total waveform uh, not as a graph the total graph can be represented by a simple equation. So whenever you want to know, generate the waveform, simply substitute t equal to 0 to infinite, you will get the waveform. Okay, so that's why it is deterministic. You can estimate the deterministic means you can estimate the current value exactly. I want to know the value at this point. Observe the previous values. That means you have the cycle information. Okay, you model this all previous values then you can estimate the current value very accurately. Very accurate means 100% accurate. There is no 1% error, error or 0.1% error. Perfectly you can estimate. So that's why it is called deterministic signal. And the same, with the same spirit, if I take, see, see this waveform. Let us say I want to estimate this value. Some value, I don't know. Let us say only up to this, the waveform occurred. Up to this waveform has occurred this part has not occurred yet. I want to estimate what is the next waveform. By observing this waveform, I cannot say what is the value of this one because I cannot fit for this known uh, signal, I cannot fit reliably a simple equation so that I can substitute for t and get the value. Okay, that's why you cannot characterize this kind of signals by using expressions but the success of a mathematician or an engineer comes when you talk about the probabilistic sense. So even though this has some, even though it has some randomness, the parameters, the global parameters you can estimate. Okay, that is, that's why it is called the probabilistic sense. For example, let us say I am showing one signal like this, random signal. Let us say it is something random signal like this and I will take another random signal like this. So you can separate these two, say you can say that the amplitude is high for this, the amplitude is less. Okay, so if I, if I take some waveform like this, this is also random waveform. And when I say like this, so it is, this, this is, uh, you know, very slowly varying waveform, this is uh, fast varying waveform. So like that, I mean, based on the, by seeing the waveform globally, you can say, you can observe something, something is there common in this, something is there in the other waveform. Like the two random waveforms by seeing itself, I mean, in, in many cases you can find 
even otherwise also by doing by finding the mean value for example and variance you can characterize the signals the set of signals you can characterize as this belong to the same set i mean let us take thousand signals which are whose mean and variances are same you can say that these thousand signals are random signals but they belong to some parent that parent is nothing but uh, the random process you you are going to learn in future okay so that the parent is can be called as random uh, i mean uh, random process so it is a probabilistic sense in probabilistic sense the statistical mean and statistical variance both are uh, of a certain set of signals are same and in fact it is not mean and variance you have to consider the uh, probability density function that is uh, i mean estimated version of probability density function is nothing but histogram you can numerically take the histogram of this waveform similarly take the histogram of another random signal let us say the histogram for something histogram is like this histogram shape is like this for something the histogram shape is like this so these two are you can say though the individual values though i cannot estimate individual values i can see some common property of this in the form of histograms so one signal one random signal can have this kind of histogram another random signal have i can have this kind of histogram so these two signals are different so you can classify in this way so you can classify these signals i mean the you can classify the random signals in probabilistic sense so you can describe individual signals also in the probabilistic sense what is the histogram of this what is the theoretical probability density of of, of this this random signal so that is what uh, we can do that okay so still you can characterize even though you cannot estimate the each value here you can still estimate that uh, you can still characterize the total signal globally okay by using probability density function basically so that there is that's why it is called probability density function and the sine wave it won't require any uh, probabilistic description it won't require because you are able to perfectly estimate the future values from the present values fourth class fifth classification is causal anti causal and non causal signal a signal see here f of t equal to 0 for t less than or equal to 0 so If you see the example here, between between zero and one, you have the between zero and one, you have the signal, or I can say t equal to greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. At t equal to greater than zero, signal exists. At t equal to less than zero, there is no signal. That means f of t equal to zero here. See here, f of t equal to zero for t equal to less than zero. That means all signal exists for t greater than or equal to 0 so example is this kind of pulse rectangular wave okay now this is called causal signal and why it is called causal signal for example if you switch on the function generator in the laboratory or signal generator in the laboratory at t equal to 0 after switching on only you will get this signal correct before switching on the equipment you won't get the signal so you can say that it is a uh, causal signal and it is called as a causal signal because after switching on the signal then only after switching on the equipment then only you are getting the output okay now uh, here just opposite to that i mean this is not in fact real scenario this kind of negative time it has no meaning of the negative time in fact in real world we don't get the negative time time is always positive so but with respect to present if you if you want to see what happened in the previous previously what happened then you can probably call it as negative okay so because you won't be able to do anything in the past whatever happened is happened so at present what is that happening and in future what is going to happen that is that is what we process okay we don't process something which is already gone We, we only get some information from the previous signal we don't estimate the previous signals we don't uh, process any previous signals we always process present signals and future signals because previous signals already we know there is may not be at this point of time already it is known correct so that's why but still there are some cases some cases which you can consider as anti causal signal that is for t 
greater than zero, there is no signal. For t less than zero, there is a signal. It is called anti-causal signal. Okay. So these kind of things, uh, I mean, frequently found in case of signal processing. If you have a, for example, let us take in the hard way. You have, I think, it is a preliminary stage for you. So, but however, for you to understand, I will explain. So let us take some kind of these things, some kind of this, some memory. You are the values are entering in the memory. Then take consider the middle of this memory as t equal to zero. Then you are process. I mean, because you are processing block by block. Okay, you are processing block by block. And here, block by block means if I take in the middle of the block, if I take t equal to zero, this side positive, this side negative. That's all. So it is an artificially created situation, basically natural situation. Causal signals only occur. Now anti-causal signals won't happen. But this side I can take anti-causal. Okay, this side causal like that I can take. Now in this case, non-causal. Non-causal means both anti-causal and causal signals together. You can I mean it is minus infinity plus infinity. Uh, for t equal to less than zero, you have a signal. For t equal to greater than zero, also you have a signal. Okay, so this is what all about the. Uh, classification of signals and in the next class we are going to apply uh, the operations how to manipulate the signals on horizontal axis how to manipulate the signals on the vertical axis horizontal axis means time vertical axis means voltage are current so we can manipulate one of these and you can call that means you are you it is a, you want to amplify the signal for example like that. okay so that uh, we'll do in the next class thank you very much like share and subscribe Hit the bell icon for more updates.